Welcome everybody to uh, the everybody's to this week's remote session. I hope you all had a uh, wonderful Nishingadev uh, Chaturdasi festival last week. Um, so we're sort of carrying on this week uh, on track in our usual fashion. And um, so it is my, my privilege and honor to introduce today's speaker, His Grace, Radha Mohan Prabhu. And um, actually, Radha Mohan, you know, he, he's based at the manor. So, uh, so I'm sure many of you will know him, but just in case, there are some who may be not so familiar. Um, it's a little bit by way of background. Uh, Radhaman Prabhu came to Iskon in 1992. So if my math serves me correctly, that's roughly three decades ago. <laughs> uh, that's not to uh, <laughs> age him in any way, because... Uh, he looks very, very fresh, <laughs> young youth. <laughs> so it's good to see that. <laughs> and uh, he's based at the manor uh, since 1994 and uh, received initiation in the year 2000. He's uh, probably best known as our communication secretary for the manor. He's also, uh, I get, well, also equally, if not more, <laughs> uh, known for his roles in Bhakshid under players. Uh, and I'm sure many of you have seen the manner plays, the Bhakshid under manner plays, the, the Nishingadev play, I think, was uh, on all major appearance festivals or, or in all major festivals, actually, the Bhakshid under players uh, put on a wonderful show, actually. And um, and if you haven't, if by way of, and I can't imagine that that would be the case, if you have not come across one of these plays, they're all on YouTube. He runs his own YouTube channel as well. Uh, and that's about Vedic, Vedic cosmology, right? Something I know absolutely nothing about. So uh, I'm hoping maybe as part of this discussion, we will delve into that a little bit as well. And he sits on the board, um, consultancy board of Bhaktisanta Institute for Higher Studies. And um, am I also right in saying that you're registrar for civil weddings at the manor? Yes, I'm one of the manor's uh, civic registrars for weddings, yes. Okay, okay, okay. So, so, you know, if anybody's thinking of tying the knot anytime soon, um, you know, here's your man, right? Please do get in touch. <laughs> he does wonderful ceremonies, right? And um, a good way, uh, an auspicious way to start your Grihasta life. So um, probably less of me now. <laughs> and uh, I'll hand over to Radha Mohan Prabhu. Um, as usual, we have some time for questions at the end. So Prabhuji will speak for roughly 40, 45 minutes. And, uh, but if you do have a burning question, which, you know, you, you know, a bit like me sometimes, can't wait or I'll forget <laughs> if I leave it to the end, <laughs> please do just, you know, interject, put your hand up. That's not a problem. Uh, you know, we won't stick to any sort of formal protocols here. We're all amongst friends. Um, so yeah, please do ask questions uh, if you do have any, and we'll save some time towards the end as well. Uh, he's, uh, I think, are you sitting at the manor? There's a wonderful picture behind you. Yes, uh, I'm actually at home, but this is a nice painting oh, here that was well. given to me by the manor. It's one of my favourite painting. You may not be able to see all of it, uh, but no, it's no. Of Radha and Krishna, where they're, uh, where, um, well, she's, Radha Rani is actually carrying the fruit, and, and it's actually to Krishna's ah. right. In this which is unusual okay. yes, uh, yes yes <laughs> it's a okay. uh, yes so it's uh, it's one of my favorite paintings so i try to include it in the background there <laughs> oh wonderful wonderful okay all right without further ado uh, I'll hand over to yourself and, thank you very uh, much thank you yes yeah. first of all when gora hari prabhu asked me to say a few words this morning i was both honored and humbled i'm honored obviously because it's nice to be asked to say something especially about exalted personalities, not least, of course, Guru Maharaj. But I was also humbled because I consider myself a lot less qualified than most other, uh, most of my god brothers and god sisters, um, and particularly in the last few years, where um, of his life, of the last few years, where perhaps I didn't get try to grab as much association as I should have. 
However, that's all part of our journey. That's all part of our own remembrances where we have, it's like a roller coaster. Sometimes we go through periods where we have had a lot of association of Guru Maharaj, um, particularly in the beginning, but then it goes through waves and phases where we are forced in some ways, I think, to take association in different forms, whether it's his lectures, whether it's his uh, watching Abhay Charan, or, or of course his autobiography. And, in, and the Guru Maharaj takes different forms. And the way I see it now, even though he's not with us physically, he's still with us. And it's only my lack of foresight or our lack of foresight if we think he's not with us. If we think he's not with us, and this is a lack of understanding of Guru Maharaj and what he's capable of, and of course, the same formula applies, of course, Sri Prabhupada himself, who is present in his books. Guru Maharaj is also present in, in, in his lectures, in his music, in his teachings. And this is understanding because one's guru is not a, it's just a physical entity, but is a spiritual entity who is eternal and is always with us. However, of course, his, um, his Vapu form, you know, his temporary visible form is no longer with us. And that brings challenges to everybody and I, it's perfectly understandable but I just wanted to pay tribute to all the devotees not least of course uh, Guru Hari Prabhu for putting together these type of sanghas um, like that but I just also wanted to add a disclaimer um, I will what I've done is I've made a list of certain main points main main incidents let's say over the past um 20 odd years uh, ago when I got initiated, first initiation, and where I have remembrances. And from that, obviously, other memories come out. And I just apologize if there's any, if I've remend remembered anything which other devotees have remembered in a different way or have a different understanding of Guru Maharaj on some details, <laughs> because that's the wonderful thing, isn't it? Sometimes, um, you know, you, you experience something and you, you have, we have those takeaways. We go home. From the event perhaps and we've got we've taken a nugget a gold nugget with us of what Guru Maharaj may have said or what he did or what he taught on the Vyasasan and obviously we can only give our own personal realizations to that ultimately we all have our own personal angle and, and of course Guru Maharaj despite of course all the things we all agree with of course we all agree with this character his commitment to Shura Prabhupada and his mission his his gentle nature and and, and so forth but at the same time, we all have our individual takeaways as well. So, I, so with great humility, I'll try and share a few memories which are hopefully will in some way inspire the listeners this morning. Well, this morning in UK time anyway. I'll just start off with, for my own purification at least, I just want to start off with a, the invocation mantras, if I may. Om Gyanam Tirivam Dasya Giranjana Shlakaya Taksho Om Manisham Yena Tasmai Shri Gurve Namaha Shri Chitanya Mano Bishtam Sapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Garamayam Tadati Spapadantikam He Krishna Kuruna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Tagatpate Gopisha Gopi Kanta Radha Kanta Namusta Tata Kanchana Gorangi, Radevinda, Vinishpuri, Vishubanu, Sute Devi, Panan Mami, Hari Priye, Vanta Kalpa, Drubascha, Kripu Simbu Devata, Patitanam, Pavanebio, Vaishnabio Namo Namo, Namo Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Pastaya, Bhutale, Shimate Bhakti Charu, Swami Nitinamine, Snikna Cheta Sukraneta, Vaginam Sa, Tusapudam, Papa Gata Prana, Nami Bhakti Tarupadam, Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Pasai Bhutale, Shimati Bhaktivedanta Swami Tinamine, Namaste Sarasvati Devi, Gaudavani Pracharine, Nevasesha Shunivadi, Prashachade Satarine, Jai Shi Krishna Tetanya Prabhu Nechananda, Shiadwaita Karadha, Siva Sadi Gaudavaka Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thank you for allowing me to do that. Hopefully I've put myself in, in the right mindset to continue with your permission, Baruz. So I will try to make this, this is not, of, this is about Guru Maharaj, of course, it's not about us and it's certainly not about me. 
Uh, but I can only, I had to begin from a personal perspective and, and make relevant trajectories. I remember back in the late 1990s, I was a brahmachari, of course, at Bachelor Manor. And as usual, um, we, at a certain point, we are encouraged actually, or to look towards Diksha Guru, who would I take initiation from? And I guess being a brahmachari, there's a bit of a fast track kind of attitude, really, almost like a competition between, <laughs> you know, I think Gohari Prabhu, you know what I mean. There's that kind of, oh, which Gohmaraj do you want and who are you aspiring for? And I have to admit, I hadn't made up my mind. It was something I didn't want to rush about. But then I think that things start, the worm started to turn when um, they, at the manner they started to advertise um, or play episode, early episodes of the Abai Charan series. Particularly, I think it was the first two capsules, or capsule one to three, I think it was. The one where, obviously, you know, Prabhupada at that time was before he was born in that period. So, you know, some of the very early episodes of Abhay Charan as they came out. And I was watching this and I was seeing these characters of Tilak on and, and, and seeing Bachano Takor represented here. And I thought, who directed this? And then Shruti Prabhu told me, oh, this is back to Chiruswami's project. I went, this a sannyasi is the film director. Wow, <laughs> how cool can you get? This is amazing. Of course, it's practically unheard of. How can someone be so spiritual and yet be able to um, produce and direct television, well, a movie, a movie, um, basically? And, and also not just the Abai Shran project, there'd been other projects as well. But of course, this was before YouTube and everything like that. So this was, a, 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 so I started to watch this to, and being an actor from an acting background, as some of you may already know, I thought this, oh, I would love to do this. But, and then I, so when Guru Maharaj started giving lectures at the manor, um, I of course was very interested. And it was almost as if every single question I had in my heart as a young devotee um, was answered by his presentations. I'm sure we've all had that where Sometimes we'd have a doubt in our heart, but by the end of his class, somehow or other, he'd iron that out without even having to put your hand up to speak or to ask any specific questions. Somehow that connection grew. He was a, quite literally a spiritual connection where it was almost as if he was able to read our hearts almost without having to speak physically. And he would just say something. And then, and of course, the, the purport or whatever it was, and then he would start speaking. And then after about 15 to 20 minutes of his class, suddenly he would start to talk about things that are directly relevant, directly relevant to your personal life at that time. And I think through that, um, that was when my uh, devotion, you know, my, my targeted, if you like, devotion towards Guru Maharaj rapidly began to develop. Uh, Abhay Charan Project, of course, was the instigator, as I mentioned, but then in his own right, he, he was someone who was a, obviously a very highly elevated personality in many respects. And I don't need to repeat all of his qualities. That's one thing we already know, as I'm sure. But then, then of course, there was his albums. It, it, in those days, we still had cassette tapes, didn't we? <laughs> so I had all these cassette tapes of Guru Maharaj, you know, from, you know um, talks from the early 90s, and, and it was still could still play them then. I think we've, we've all thrown these things away now. Not, not the cassette tapes, but the cassette player. I've still got the cassette tapes, but I've got nothing to play them on because now it's all on DVD and it's all on, on, online. But in those days, you, you have these, these nuggets, don't you? You have these things. And I thought it was all wonderful. And they all spoke to me in the same way. And I think his gentle nature was particularly attractive because... I needed that gentleness, uh, uh, you know, because being a Brahmacharya at Bhaktan Tamana at Janmasmi time, and these are wonderful, great things, great opportunities for Seva, but it can get very intense as well sometimes at the manor um, with the crowding, with the with everything else and, 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 and the various pressures. But here was this wonderful soft voice that kind of that's that 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 reassuring tone he always had, which is like, don't worry, it's okay. Krishna's Krishna's with you. It's all right. And when I used to listen to his albums, um, you know, or, or I think it was three volumes altogether, if I remember, that you that sense of calm that Guru Maharaj was able to install within within us, within a sometimes challenging circumstances. Um, and I think that was it. And by this time, I decided I was almost certain that I wanted to take initiation um, from 
back Guru Maharaj, of course. But one day out of the blue, um, on the morning I'd made that internal decision that this was the person that was going to connect me to ISKCON and to Prabhupada, and of course to the whole of ISKCON. And that's a very important part also of Guru Maharaj's mood. Not that we have this guru, this guru, um, guru competition or anything like that, but this was the person who I felt could connect me to ISKCON, to connect us all to ISKCON uh, to, to, for the rest of our lives, ultimately, to Prabhupada's ISKCON. But out of the blue, I think it was either Radha Vanopabhu or, of course, the late Harry Vamsapabhu or but one of these senior godmothers said, well, would you like to be an Abhay Charan? We're looking for a George Harrison. And my... <laughs> So I thought, this is my Guru Maharaj. <laughs> so, of course, uh, before that process unfolded, I, of course, went on this wonderful roller coaster experience of, of course, being, being playing George Harrison in the Abhay Charan series, mainly filled, of course, um, in either Wembley, at Bhattan to Manor, in, I think it was Berry Place, um, various places on location. And having that experience of not just being spiritually guided by Guru Maharaj, but actually directed by Guru <laughs> And even, and, and often when one is making, in fact, I've heard it being said, often when one is making a, a movie or a film, one has to use artistic license. But my experience was that Guru Maharaj wanted, as, at least the episodes I was aware of, wanted things to be as accurate as possible. To the point where um, he invited, of course, Sham Sundar Prabhu, as in the original one of the original pioneers, this one who is to be friend of George Harrison, to come and participate and help him direct the scenes that he was actually quite literally in, <laughs> because Guru Maharaj had no false ego. It wasn't about oh, this is my thing. He wanted to involve his god brothers and his god sisters, and he he could see that even though he had, let's say. Um, a higher spiritual status, let's say, than some of his god brothers and god sisters. He had so much respect for those who are his contemporaries, his peers, and, and certainly his seniors, actually like Shama Sundar Prabhu and, and Mukunda Maharaj and, and, and Guru Das and so forth. And so he consulted them on, on, on the script and helped form a script um, based on that period. So he was someone who, who Gumaraj was obviously someone who was multi-talented, multifaceted, a peaceful sannyasi, a learned, of course, extremely learned, extremely devoted, and not only a, fil a film director, but someone who, who was producing as well. And this is the, this is, these are the characteristics of someone who is um, superhuman, actually. There's, there's very few individuals on the planet that we'll ever see again who, who could do these things. And also at the same time filming with him, my experience was probably the, one of the best periods of, of my life. Um, not only did I get, of course, Guru Maharaj's association, but there's also um, where well, I got to know Sham Sundar Prabhu and, and, and so forth. But one of the qualities I noticed when filming the Abhay Charan series was um, how he treated everybody, including the, what you call the, the professional actors or the guest non-devotee extras and other actors that were involved. I think Guru Maharaj did um, include as many devotees as he possibly could into the cast. Um, but I think at other times, because he wanted the TV serial to be kind of accurate as well, sometimes, of course, he had to go out and bring in professional actors um, by, of course, giving devotees the first chance. And sometimes, but what was amazing was that some of the professional actors were obviously very quickly realized that Guru Maharaj was not a, uh, a normal personality, that they saw devotees bowing to him. And, and this was an alien environment to, to the guest actors, some of these professionals that were brought in from agencies. And I remember one asking him, um, Swami, you know, how can people are bowing down to you, mate? You know, and, 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 and Guru Maharaj very, very humbly just said, didn't say you don't have to bow down to me don't worry it's just it's just they believe uh, they're not bowing down to me they're just bowing down to the super soul that is within and and and, and so on and so forth it's, but please please do not feel uncomfortable by this action please um you don't have to do that please take some take some vegetarian food and and and, and this is very important a very important quality to be able to connect to non-devotees and make them ultimately into devotees and um, make sure that all the cast, not just the devotee cast, but all the members, all are nicely fed, everyone is looked after, 
Uh, everyone feels involved, you know, whether it's the makeup team, whether it's the camera crew, whether it's the extras, whether it's the main actors. And, and absolutely remarkable experience, I have to say. I could go on and on and on, but I don't want to. I've got so many other things to say as well. So I didn't want to um, let that period. But I think at that time, that was in the middle of that film. And that's when I got initiated. So obviously a very important part. Um, other experiences of Guru Maharaj was in South Africa. We did um, what I, I think we, I'm not sure what we call it, but there was a special episode that never ended up being officially part of the Abhay Charan series. Um, it was never designed to be. Some of you will know about this. There's stories about this. Some people say it was the lost tapes. Some people say it was tapes that were put aside for another time or were filmed with the Abhay Charan crew. Uh, but it had a different flavour as a standalone story. So I went, I spent some time with Guru Maharaj in South Africa. I think Naveen Krishna, and I think it was Sandipan Muni Prabhu was also there, although forgive me if I've remembered it wrong, where, again, very similar, um, I think that Guru Maharaj's ability to adapt to all circumstances was absolutely striking. And his ability to be able to float above time. And what I mean by that, is that some with, with filming and also with catching planes to different parts of South Africa or to Mauritius or, or wherever it will back to India, wherever it was, because, you know, he, he put Abhay Charan first and sometimes plane flights had to be canceled or rescheduled. But the way that he took everything in his uttermost stride was absolutely striking because I, I'm the kind of person who, who panics when it comes to traveling and flights and, and things like that, because, but he didn't seem to mind. He didn't, he did. Uh, there was a sense of being non, not trapped by time or not pulled or not directed by time that I think he had, because time, of course, color is a material thing. The spiritual time with time with Krishna and this material time, the time of the plane, the time of the flight. And he was able to, in, in his usual multifaceted way, being able to do so many things simultaneously. At the same time, again, once again, care for all the other actors and the guest actors as well. So again, that I don't, I have to add at this point, I never saw the results of that particular episode. I heard recently that they'd been found and there was some editing going on, but um, I'd, I'd be interested to see the results of that. But again, um, to be able to spend some time um, with Guru Maharaj in, in that. I, I remember also this, by that time I was already initiated. So at this point I started to make mistakes. And, you know, <laughs> where I think everybody has those things where I think at one point I went to, uh, I think it was the uh, Rondé Bosch, Cape Town Temple, where I got some Mongolati sweets for Guru Maharaj. And I made the mistake of passing them with my left hand instead of my right hand. I, um, um, of course that's, you know, these things happen and I'm left naturally left-handed. So it was just one of those things done in a panic. And that was my first minor chastisement, um, but it was soft. I don't think you should have given them it with your left hand. So th this, but I, he was, he was lo loving and soft about it. At the same time, underneath, there was this sense of, you're not going to be doing that again. <laughs> so without raising his voice, without raising his voice or making you feel discouraged in Krishna consciousness. Um, and, and, you know, you could also argue it wasn't a major deal, but I've got other similar mistakes I made in the, since then. But he was something who, but he was able to adapt to different people because when it came to the guest actors, the non-devotee, he was very, very liberal. He was very, very liberal and loving to them and he spent time talking to some of the more senior actors that were in that story. And of course, so this is actually a quality that Prabhupada, of course, himself had, which is time, place and circumstance. How much can a disciple take? Or if someone is not a devotee, then, then just general pleasantries are absolutely appropriate. As you make a bit more advancement, more is expected from you. And your guru is the role is to chastise and correct you. It's actually nectar, actually, to be corrected by Guru Maharaj. Uh, but in a, and in, in a way that you never feel disconnected from him or put off. Or I, I, I remember a few um, incidents where moving away now from South Africa, uh, there was, I remember there was a retreat 
this is, I think, some of the early retreats before the, the, the big retreats that used to happen in Croatia or, or whatever. And it was in Buckland Hall in Wales. And I remember that I think me and a few other devotees who put on a little play, but we were the play but did, did not please Guru Maharaj. We, in, in my own puffed up attitude, um, I wasn't thinking about what would be good to, to see, but oh, this will be funny, this will be a laugh, we can do this, we can do that. And we got carried, it was too frivolous. And I remember Guru Maharaj looking at, watching it, and then he walked out halfway through <laughs> because it was too silly. It was too, it was like, it was, it, it was a pantomime. It was um, not Krishna conscious enough. And, but the, just the very fact that he walked out was devastating enough. He didn't need to say anything. And he never spoken to me about that play, but that was a warning. You see, that was enough to, and he was too polite to actually say anything, but, but um, he, he's, you know, they say, they say people vote with their feet. And at that point, that was, um, and I think I remember writing an apology about that. <laughs> because it was to do, I can't remember the details of it. In fact, I don't want to remember the details. Um, but here was a kind of a second type of chastisement. I remember once when um, in South Africa, we were staying in this big life member's house. And, you know, the, you know some of the houses that life members lived in in South Africa, uh, are not, you know, a big, a big house is built by UK standards. So you, you know, maybe like 15 rooms and, and, and so forth, owned by one person, one uh, wealthy life member. And there was one room with a piano in it. I remember once I was playing around with the piano in Guru Marge, I said, oh, that was nice, you know. So the next morning, um, I, maybe again, my ego took off. So I started playing with the piano, the same tune over and over again. And I saw Guru Marge emerge coming to, down the corridor towards the room. And I thought, oh, maybe he's happy. He took his head in the door and he said, I think you should be chanting your rounds, Radhamo. <laughs> he said, I don't, I, I don't think you should be doing this anymore. In, in other words, what happened was that he, he, um, he, he you know, made me feel very, very, very small. It was, he put me in my place. And, and what happened was that as soon as one's ego starts to kind of manifest, Guru Maharaj was there to, to dispel the ego. It was almost as if he was able to read his disciples. Just as soon as his disciples are going above a certain mark, acting out of sync, somehow that he was there, he was able to read us and, and to, to remind us of, of what we are. You know, why should I be playing the piano if I should be chanting my extra rounds? You know, exactly. And why should I be showing off about playing something silly on the piano? Um, he, he was he was able to draw the line. Um, there's another one. I hope people don't mind about these. I think they're quite fun. Uh, where I was playing, we were it was Jamastami at Bhaktivedanta Manor, and I think I was playing a demon. I was playing a Banasura in a Krishna Leela play, and I was decked up like a real demon with a demon's hat and a demon's costume. And I'd wrote the play, so I was quite again. I was I had pride start to set in, and Guru Maharaj was at the front with Shruti Baba watching the play. And there's a big fight scene, of course, those who know the Leela, uh, there's a big fight scene between Krishna and Banasura. And of course, Banasura gets killed. And um, I was very, kind of, oh, Guru Maharaj, look at my... So Guru Maharaj came after the play, came backstage to meet the cast of the play. And there I was, you know, standing there, six foot one tall with my costume. And he just walked past me and then he touched the feet of the actress that was playing Krishna. And then he carried on. And then I realized something. This was symbolic. I was expecting attention from Guru Maharaj. I was expecting praise for playing a demon. But what did Guru Maharaj do? He went straight to the child, the eight-year-old child that was playing Krishna. And he was telling me something. He was saying, don't be proud of these demon parts that you're playing. I'm still, whatever, I just want to see Krishna. <laughs> And it also goes to show that um, one, especially I think in Indian culture, where someone is Vedic culture, where someone is playing a character, in one sense, when you're on the stage, you're non-different from that character. If you're playing a demon, you have to bring out the demoniac aspects of your own heart in order to play that character. And Guru Maharaj wasn't, he didn't want to see the demon inside me. He only wanted to, to um, praise and to give attention to the actors and actresses that were playing the devotees or, of course, Krishna himself. <laughs> so Guru Maharaj wasn't seeing things 
in a normal way. And he certainly wasn't seeing things that would feed my own ego. He was seeing things that would destroy my ego and to put plug us into Krishna consciousness. I remember another uh, pastime. I'll, I'll move on from these kind of um, negative things, if you like. Um, but I, there's one more I, I think is important. We were in uh, Villaggio de Hare Krishna near Milano in North Italy. And again, it, I think it was one of these early retreats before they got us a bit bigger by, by the noughties, I think. And I, I remember that Villaggio de Hare Krishna, you've got the temple, but you've got like a village as well um, of devotees, a devotee village, which is wonderful, actually. Anyway, one particular house, uh, Radha Vinod Prabhu had um, sponsored pizza for everyone. And of course, we all kind of had big, nice pizza and things like that. And of course, Guru Maharaj came and um, we all had pizza. And um, it was wonderful, actually. Um, but then Guru Maharaj, afterwards, he said, and he, again, he, he put us in our place. He said, um, I don't think Prabhupada had two heart attacks on the Jaladuta, so we could sit here and have pizza. Oh, my goodness me. <laughs> This was a warning, you see, to us, which was that it's not about us. It's about Prabhupada's mission. He was, it's all, okay, devotee association is important, but we also have a mission. And this was something which I think Guru Maharaj actually used to remind us of almost constantly if we had, if we had the ears to hear, which is we're part of a mission, which is Prabhupada's mission. And that, obviously, our, each of us association, God brothers and God sisters association, of course, is important. But ultimately, we also have to understand what we're supposed to be doing, which is pleasing Sri Prabhupada. And that brings me on to, um, I would say, probably the, the, the theme of many, if, if not most, of Guru Maharaj's uh, intimate classes, particularly um, with his disciples, from my experience. And I think for many years, he, he, he played on this emphasis, which you will all be familiar with. Uh, and this, of course, was... Um, keeping Prabhupada at the centre of ISKCON. This was something which all of you will realise. He was saying, no matter what happens, no matter what happens, it, uh, we have to realise that Prabhupada is the centre guru of ISKCON, that the, the Diksha guru, uh, you know, his, his disciples and grand disciples, or whoever's playing the role of Diksha guru, is a transparent via medium to show Prabhupada. And this is something which Guru Maharaj used to repeat many, many times, and those who, um, well, those who've attended those classes will know exactly what I'm talking about. And I think this began, I think, once in Radhadesh Temple in Belgium, where, it, of course, it was on 17th of September, which, of course, we all know is Guru Maharaj's appearance day. And he turned it into a Prabhupada festival. And he also acknowledged the fact that it, there wasn't just um, his own disciples or aspiring disciples in Radhadesh. There were local devotees, of course, devotees that come from across Europe with different Guru Maharajas or aspiring uh, to, for others as well, and as well as, of course, himself, and as well as young Baptists and, and so forth. And he said, I don't want this to be about myself. I want this to be about Srila Prabhupada. Even to the point where there was initiations taking place, he, he wanted to invite everybody, but his main point over and over again was we want a united ISKCON and it cannot be united if everyone is following their own guru and not having respect for my god brothers and god sisters and other gurus as well that ISKCON has to be united on by the uh, through the lotus feet of Shul Prabhupada who Guru Maharaj would remind us Prabhupada was Lord Chaitanya's general he's not a normal he is um not just another Diksha guru in, 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 in the line of the Gordia line, actually. He, he was actually uh, by personally sent to the West and around the world by Lord Titania, Lord Titania's general, as predicted. And if you all know, everyone who knows Guru Maharaj well, will we'll say, yes, Guru Maharaj used to speak to, about that all the time. For many, many years, he would say, look, yes, you're my disciples, but that does not mean you only associate or you only serve that God brothers and God sisters know, you know, you, Prabhupada's mission, Prabhupada's family is one. And, and you don't, and, but on with that basis, there's no need for us to go anywhere else outside of ISKCON. Even if your Guru Maharaj, uh, Guru Maharaj disappears or falls down 
or you find someone that is more advanced outside of ISKCON. It's not necessarily because we've already got Prabhupada. And Guru Maharaj, and this is one of the things that I, I actually I told him personally about why I wanted to be initiated by him back, back in the year 2000, because he was so Prabhupada centered, he understood who Prabhupada was. He understood Prabhupada's position, who he was, the acharya almost, if, if you like, of, of the uh, of, of Lord Chaitanya's international mission. It was Prabhupada who brought this out and, and connected to that. I do remember Guru Maharaj giving a lecture in uh, 26 Second Avenue, of course, in New York City. Very symbolic uh, place because, of course, as we all know, this is where Prabhupada inaugurated ISKCON in 1966, I think it was, in 26 Second Avenue, a small storefront. It's basically quite narrow in the front and goes quite a way back. So it's like a narrow school, school, um, storefront. And of course, um, in, as part of the 1996 um, Prabhupada Centennial, ISKCON bought it back of whoever had it before at a very high price. But anyway, it was back into ISKCON's hands by then. And I think it was, uh, I can't remember exactly when, but Guru Maharaj was um, there. We, we were there with the back 20 players. And he was giving a lecture in 26 Second Avenue. And he said, but the thought, there wasn't that many. And, 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 and Guru Maharaj was saying that this is a reminder of how humble, how humble Prabhupada's mission started. But from humble beginnings, look what, look what happened. Look, what, look at the temples around the world. You know, over 600 uh, ISKCON temples around the world, so many thousands of disciples from different gurus and so forth. Starting from literally, starting from just giving his disciples just for bits of apple, that's all he could afford. From abject poverty to... Um, in the, the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, by which we recognize today. And this was Guru Maharaj's theme, but he said, he also used the opportunity, though, because the, the turnout was quite low uh, that day in 26 seconds. He said, why, why is this not, why is not the New York uh, Skimmerhorn Temple in Brooklyn, or why is this uh, 26 seconds, why is it not packed full of devotees? We need to boost the Western preaching mission in the way that Prabhupada would have desired, especially back in those days, um, that Guru Maharaj was very, very, as we all know, was very, very committed and focused on Prabhupada's mission. And he was um, saying, yes, we need to, to broaden our horizons in the same way that Sri Prabhupada uh, preached with an open mind and an open heart, of course, back in those days of the 26th Second Avenue. And I think this, this was connected to Guru Maharaj's mood and the, the, uh, uh, and about keeping Prabhupada's mission at the center and Prabhupada as a personality at the center. I think this is very important for us. Um, I think it's important, I wanted to share some uh, memories of the opening of the Ujjain temple. Of course, uh, that was, a wonderful, again, a wonderful experience um, for many people. I, I just want to share one or two realizations from that period. I was making, helping to make uh, kind of an opening, I think it was a small mini documentary on the opening, covering the opening of the Ujjain Temple with devotees uh, and the devotee camera crew. I think some of them were probably the same camera people that worked on the Abhay Charan series. So there was an obvious connection there. We, we did the voiceover and scripting for about all about the Iskon in Ujjain and connecting it, of course, to the history of Ujjain itself, being the place where Sandipani Muni would uh, teach Krishna in Balaram. And, and this is so I got um, a tour, if you, I think, of some um, senior god brothers, including Guru Maharaj himself, in the temple. Uh, actually, so at the time, the temple hadn't been opened. We were staying in a smaller place, about 10 minutes walk in Ujjain from the temple. But what struck me about this period was Guru Maharaj's fervent, strong desire to make everybody across ISKCON realize that this is not his temple. This is Prabhupada's temple. This is ISKCON's temple. Any, any one of any uh, guru or, or, or non-guru or whatever is welcome to ISKCON in Ujjain. And during the opening ceremonies that I think took us several days, that I, um, he said, please, please uh, include in the documentary, please include my God brothers and God sisters in this. Please make them feel welcome, make them feel involved, serve them, uh, including, I remember, Ambarish Prabhu, of course, who just come over from Mayapur for the opening. And, and I mean, the, and how Grimaj 
treated some of these i mean you will we all know we've all seen um indian construction workers in india who are extremely talented individuals i remember seeing somebody carving one of the columns in the ujjain temple and it was he was quite an elderly man he had a beard and he was without any scaffolding he'd, he'd climbed up this pillar he was chipping away and he was holding he was about eight foot from the ground chipping away and his legs were wrapped around this pillar and <laughs> I mean, it, you know, we only in India, right? Only in India can people do that. And this person was working for probably, I don't know, a, a very small. Uh, he was doing it. It was it was a back. He was saturated with bhakti, and it was probably working for next to nothing, I imagine. But I remember Guru Maharaj was taking us as a group of us. We were having a tour of the of the um, of the temple under construction, and Guru Maharaj. He, the first thing he did was he saw this worker up there and, 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 and he called them all down. He said, make sure they get prashad, please, please. And he sat with them and he took prashadam with them because he could see they were building Krishna's temple, Prabhupada's temple, his temple. And I think that was a very wonderful experience, I think. And these little nuggets of experiences, I think, stay with us, don't they? I think um, an interesting, if I my memory serves me correctly, I think it was Rani Mukherjee that was there for the opening of the Ujjain temple. Of course, that was, she was the most well-known person there, of course. And that, I think the whole of Ujjain came to a standstill when she showed up because obviously you got many devotees and of course, non-devotees all coming to the temple, politicians and, and, and the local governor. And, and of course, Rani Mukherjee had all this attention. But Grimaj was also charmingly, detached from that as well of course you know she's an important person a vip vvip but of course maharaj of course being a sannyasi also he, there's always that sense of you could sense he wasn't he respected rani Mukherjee, who was a devotee in her own right but of course that that sense that uh, that um what's that for that excitement of having a vi a bollywood vip in the temple was not so important to him actually than his own god brothers and god sisters and his will to make sure that everyone felt included that everyone was looked after from from all the devotees from around the world and again so he was not somebody who was um over over was it, overclouded let's say by 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 bollywood um although of course uh, rani Mukherjee is a wonderful devotee um, I know I'm running out of time, but I've still got some leaders to go through. If I can rush through, how much time do I have left, Gora Harry Prabhu? So I wanted to keep the schedule, you see. I think, yeah, we're quarter past. Um, so please pray continue. Um, we could we will flex it a little bit. So by 12:40. So we have some time. Okay, all right. Um, because I'm still I'm still I can still have more to say. Uh, um I remember um going on to retreats of course there was a some point when um i think guru Maharaj's retreats were um i can't remember the year actually but they started to expand and become more concentrated and it was very clear to everybody that guru Maharaj wanted his retreats not just to be about a series of lectures because that can happen in the temple or, or on, online but actually these retreats were opportunities for something a bit more intimate for to enhance devotee association and have that time when you're waking up in an environment, especially for Grihasta devotees who were not um, living in the temple, as I was at the time. Um, those who perhaps never, as they woken up, let's say, in an environment like a temple environment, let's say, at early hours of the morning, and be amongst god brothers and god sisters and well wishers and devotees, and of course, obviously, Guru Maharaj. But he, he, from the very beginning, from very early on, he wanted the retreat. I've always felt he always wanted the retreats to be special that that's something that was very dear to his heart because he knew just turning up in a temple giving Bhavatam class and then leaving was not enough for a lot of people he really wanted a devotee especially householder devotees i think to spend their holiday time and make make them into a spiritual holiday and i remember the 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 one in malaga where there's this whole entire hotel um, was devoted some of you may remember that and he and he loved drama Guru Maharaj obviously loved filming but he also loved theatre so the back to players we did about nine or ten different plays over I think a five-day period in Malaga and um, and he was saying that you know 
devotees have come all this way. It's hot, you know, 35 degrees south of Spain in, in the summer. <laughs> Too hot for a lot of UK devotees. And I even remember, you know, the, the makeup, um, theatre makeup, just melting um, on the spot, <laughs> on the spot. You know, that's how hot it was. And and um, and Gumaj knew. He, he said, "We have to make sure people are comfortable." You know, yes, we can listen to me on the theme of Ramayan. I think it was during that retreat. But we also need a break. We need some entertainment. So that's where the dramas came in. And and uh, again, that that was wonderful. But I do remember a little misdemeanor. There was on top of the hotel. There was this open door, uh, open air swimming pool. And after it was very very hot. And most of the members of the Bachelor players were like between the ages of nineteen and twenty two. And I don't know how old I was at the time. Maybe thirty or something. Um, but I must confess, I may. I say may. I say May, so I'm leaving because I know this has been recorded. I may have missed a couple of his lectures and may have gone to the swimming pool. <laughs> yeah, because it was very hot and we'd just come out doing a drama. And But the funny thing was, word got out. Someone was a grass. Someone actually told Grimaj, Grimaj, some of the devotees are, have gone to the swimming pool and didn't attend your lecture on, on Ramayan or something like that. And I was terrified about what his response would be. But Guru Maharaj was, I won't say surprisingly, because we all know he's he's very soft and very lovely. But it was it was a, let's say it was a bit of a relief that Guru Maharaj said, "It's all right. They are young. It's hot. Let them enjoy." And I thought that, but but let them. But they've got to come to the lectures tomorrow. You know? <laughs> and in that way, well, I was sitting at the front of the rest of the lectures, but not because of being chastised, but because of being loved. Because he, Guru Maharaj understood that Krishna consciousness is all about love. And that correction and, and, um, and realignment and getting back on track or, or, or focusing on, on hearing Krishna Qatar is based, it, it should be voluntary and it should be done with love that people should, should naturally in their hearts want to, to come. But also Guru Maharaj's, um understanding that you you know to have, if you've got someone who's a bit younger to give them a bit of space especially some of the backhanded players some of them were kind of like guru callers um who, who went to the backhanded manner school they have a, a kind of um, i say this with respect to have the sometimes their own way of doing things let's say and and maharaj he loved them all and they felt loved and i think that's very important um coming into more recent uh, times, or when I say recent, in the last ten years, I think. Um, I remember it was um, two. It was ISKCON's fiftieth anniversary, which I believe was in two thousand sixteen. That period. So Shruti Prabhu, Agoy Prabhu, and to, to some degree myself and Sri Radha Raman Prabhu, uh, we organised Guru Maharaj to give a lecture at the House of Lords. This is, of course, in, in the House of the Parliament. In the one section of the House of Parliament is owned by the House of Lords. So Guru Maharaj, there was a program there and Guru Maharaj was to, to, went there. And what was lovely is that Guru Maharaj had a choice. You had, the problem was the program started at six o'clock, which meant that um, it was rush hour traffic on the road. And so Shruti Bhuru gave Guru Maharaj a choice, London tube to get to Westminster, central London, or by car. You know, we can, you know, of course, there was plenty of people who were willing to drive Guru Maharaj by car from Watford to central London. And Guru Maharaj said, I want to go on the train with everybody else. I don't want to have a, a lift. I don't want to be a chauffeur-driven, you know, limousine or anything like that. I want to go by the train with everybody else. When he found out that all, most of the attendees would go by train, he wanted to come with us on the train. And so we all, of course, because at some point it was quite crowded. And Guru Maharaj, of course, being transcendental, and in many ways, I suppose you could say above and beyond um, spiritually, everybody else on the train, and yet was with them, sitting with them, sitting patiently on, 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 the, on, the, on the, the Northern Line, I think, or the Jubilee Line, actually, with Shruti Bhavu in it and Prana Bhavu and everybody else. Was, it was wonderful to see. It was, I felt guilty. Well, Mark, Guru Maharaj should not be on the train. He should be you know, in a Rolls Royce or something. <laughs> but here he, by his own choice, he wanted to join us on the train. And I know this, I'll go with everybody else. And I had the surface, uh, this, or I gave myself 
Uh, I bought him a ticket, of course. He didn't have an Oyster card, of course. Uh, um, I had the service of buying his his, his um, all day travel card, and I actually put it in the slot for him, to, so the, the the doors would open at the various checkpoints. And at one point, Guru Maharaj he said, "I can do that. I can do my own." I said, "Guru Maharaj." It's not difficult to carry your card, but I just want to render some service. <laughs> and he laughed. He said, if you must. You know? <laughs> but anyway, when we got to the House of Lords, obviously you go for security and everything. But there was, again, a surprisingly low turnout. There was some, I think the, the, we were expecting MPs and Lords to turn up. But because of some other issue that had come up, I think it was, I can't remember who it was. There was a bit of a low parliamentary turnout because of some other um Iraq or something like that, I think. And um, so Grimaj was undetermined by the fact that the this wonderful room called the River House Room in the House of Lords, beautiful, beautiful um, historical room. But but Grimaj was unfazed. He just spoke about glorified Shri Prabhupada and his achievements in front of whoever was there, even though it was mainly devotees and one or two others. Uh, and so so he didn't seem to be disappointed he was just happy with who he met i think including bob blackman mp and one or two others that did make the effort to to, to come and he was just happy to 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 um, converse with and infuse and to connect with with um Iriscon, those that did make the effort to come i'm talking about of course the, the politicians here and of course he i, I think so, i have to say um i was relieved actually i think kamles krishna babu or someone like that gave guru Maharaj a lift back so he didn't have to take the train on the way back. Um, but nevertheless, it was a great pleasure to accompany him on the way there. Um, again, I, I, I've got um, a few of the things I hope I'm not going on too long, Prabhu. Um, yeah, is this all right? Yes, pause for if any devotees have any questions at this stage. Yes, I have a few more Leelas to share, but um, it, it yeah, may be a good time for some questions. Yeah, any questions for Lord Mohan Prabhu? We, we can go back to the questions if, if need be, Prabhu, if there's none at the moment. In fact, if I, if I may myself, <laughs> I'll take the liberty. Yeah. Um, okay, there's a couple of. So I just wanted to pick up on the missing tapes. I'm intrigued now. Oh, <laughs> the missing... no. Don't, the missing <laughs> tapes. Don't go there, Prabhu. Don't go there. <laughs> I, I, don't, I think we have uh, Prabhanu from South Africa, right, who, who may be able to shed some light on the missing tapes, because I'm sure <laughs> the, the miss <laughs> is just, it's just yeah. too much. Yeah, yeah. Prabhanu <laughs> Prabhu, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the missing tapes. What we can do, Prabhu, we could return to this maybe in a few minutes if you're having difficulty right now. Yeah. Um, and of course, Radha Mohan Prabhu didn't just play demons, uh, which he can't. He also played a uh, very transcendental Lord Chaitanya on a Gorpanin play, right? So, <laughs> which I do recall. Uh, so it wasn't just demons. Uh, he also has very much a transcendental side to him, just to balance, <laughs> balance things out there. Um, but to be honest with you, I always felt like a demon when being with Gumaraj. Do you know what I mean by that? Because when you're with someone who's purer than yourself, or in the presence of someone who's purer than oneself, you, your, your own anatos, your own flies in the window, so to speak, your own, the own, <laughs> your own dead flies that are lurking in the window, become more exposed. And I don't know if everyone else has had that experience where you feel unqualified, one feels some, sometimes, um, you know, that, that Guru Maharaj could see right through you so to speak. And I felt it, yes, I've played all devotees or demons I've played over the years. But the, the demon um, Leela, I think, if you want to call it, was the one that was probably the one that felt the most kind of poignant um, as far as <laughs> being with group <laughs> large is concerned. <laughs> I, I, oh, maybe, we can, sure, so, can, so, okay. maybe we can return to the, 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 the missing tapes if you want to. But I just wanted to say that I do remember um, being, uh, I remember in, in Ujjain, of course, this was when, by this time, of course, the Ayurvedic um, centre had been built and developed, uh, of course, and um, many thanks, I think, to Radha Manopabhu, Champlata Prabhu, and also I got, when I was there, 
association of uh, Lila Pushot and Bhubu and other devotees. And I think the fact that Gurmaj supported this, this Ayurvedic clinic that was so was adjacent, of course, to the Ujjain temple, tells you a lot. What it tells you about Guru Maharaj's support for the, for the Ayurvedic um, hospital, actually, or clinic or retreat for devotees. It tells you that Guru Maharaj had that balance of vision between the spiritual and the physical. That this body, it is something we have to think about our health. We have to look after our health. We have to be conscious of what we eat, how we live our life, uh, follow, uh, uh, you know, have that balance because these bodies are given to us to serve Krishna. We're not the bodies, but they are. We are, they are facilities to serve Krishna with. So Guru Maharaj was perfectly aware of the fact that we have this spiritual transcendental message, but also to, we, we, whilst we're living in this physical world, um, we, you know, to, to engage in, in Ayurvedic principles or even to the point of having an Ayurvedic clinic um, in, in Ujjain there, I think speaks a lot. It speaks volumes to that. So of course the running of the Ayurvedic clinic at that time, um, of course, also, it's a good opportunity to pay tribute to those devotees that, of course, worked on that, set that up and, and, and running it and so forth. Uh, but I have to admit, I had a wonderful experience there. And when, um, when Guru Maharaj would pass through the Ujjain temple there, um, of course, he was always traveling and so forth. He, I was uh, honored, actually, and, and privileged to be able to spend some time with him in his room there because I, I, I suppose he, well, he knew that he wanted to give uh, a bit of attention to foreign devotees or devotees foreign to India, uh, Western devotees, who perhaps needed that, because everything is in Hindi, you see, in Ujjain, uh, in ge generally. So Gurmaj, he kind of was very accommodating for the you know, visiting, if you like, pilgrims from other parts of the world. And other devotees that have been to the, the Ayurvedic clinic have said, oh, back to Dushwami, he you know, came and he spent some time with us and, and so forth. And I think that's a very important quality, but it was also something as well, which I wanted to share with you, which was, this was during the time, of course, when he was the uh, chair of the GBC, I think, uh, I believe was the title, although I'm not exactly sure the exact title, but I was also conscious of the fact that it wasn't an easy post to have. It was, he, he found, he, he was, it was a political role he had. And it was a difficult role he had as chair of the GBC because when you're taking on those things, it's, you get to see all of this con, the good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful, the, uh, and the difficult decisions that have to be made as well about temples, about um, you know, the political, the, the challenges in Maipur, in Vindavan, in, in, in uh, New York, in, in around the world. And he, he, he was, and, and I think Guru Maharaj, at the end of the day, he was a guru, he was a teacher, well, more than a guru, a maha guru and a teacher. And he, but the, the, the politics, I think he wanted to, he wanted to serve Prabhupada in any way, which of course the devotees wanted him to serve but i think he felt that the that the challenges that iskon had um was was um difficult for him it was difficult he didn't want to see um devotees uh, devotees struggle or whatever it might be of course he wouldn't he wanted to to be that and i think he, he there was he did say that not everything and he told me not everything in iskon is perfect uh, but it's still Prabhupada's iskon and that's the trick. Just like, for example, uh, there is a, a child um, who perhaps, you know, um, makes mistakes. You know, you, you know, children make mistakes. Of course they do. Children, they fall over, they, they graze their knees, they fall off their bike, they fight, they do silly things. Uh, but you still love the child. So you still love the child. So, that, so similarly, um, sometimes there may be difficult things to deal with in ISKCON, but you still love ISKCON because it's Prabhupada's ISKCON. And this was Guru Maharaj's thing. And his main thing was that we need to do more about Western preaching. Uh, this was very dear to Guru Maharaj because it was dear to Shul Prabhupada. So I just wanted to finish off a few final words from the main point of my presentation, and then Gauhari Prabhu, you can, I guess, take over or chair the rest of it. Just a few final realizations following a few years um, which I call the lost years, as far as I'm concerned, where I didn't get this, uh, didn't I didn't fight for his association in the same way I did when I was a bit younger. Perhaps that was because 
being um, he was in the UK for a bit a little bit less than he was previously, and and some of the big retreats that he had were a bit too close to John Mastermy for ha- for me to have time off and, and things like that. But at the same time, the he, his autobiography, of course, um, and of course his music and, and everything, and and of course the archived Abai Tran tapes. Um, was a great comfort to me. I remember my wife and I reading his autobiography with great respect, and it was written so honestly, and it was so Prabhupada centered. It was so it was so much. It was basically giving all credit to his, not just to Shri Prabhupada, but to the God brothers that introduced him to Shri Prabhupada as well. And his whole journey was so beautifully and honestly told and, and openly told that I think that his his book. Um, saw me through or saw us through what I call the lost years. And, uh, and, and I think also just to finish off to say that we have to realize extraordinary people like Guru Maharaj don't actually leave us um, if we have the right understanding. Um, now Guru Maharaj is gone, but in some ways, and in some subtle ways, I feel his presence more than ever before because we cannot we cannot turn to his um, bafu. We cannot return to his physical body. We only have to turn to his, his spiritual body, if you like, or you know, the body of his his, his lectures, his teachings, his, his emphasis, what he spoke about, our memories, our, our nuggets, our experiences, and Abhay Charan and other kind of projects and publications. And that is where Guru Maharaj resides. And, and, and so Guru Maharaj hasn't gone. He has not left. So those are my realizations. Thank you very much for listening and bearing with me. Those are just a few humble things I wanted to share um, today. And I'd like to uh, pass it over now to Gohari Prabhu, perhaps to, to, to add and to facilitate. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Prabhu. Uh, in particular, you know, you mentioned very poignantly, uh, you know, it comes across that Guru Maharaj Association can be had in that legacy, right? Um, all those individual experience, not from all those individual experiences to the lecture tapes, to the bhajans, to retreats. Um, so thank you very much for that. Uh, we have one question um, from Vinod Mandri. Uh, I don't know if she's still online, but I think she, basically she asked, can you tell us how did Guru Maharaj guide you as playing George Harrison. So you played it so well. And I'm sure if many of you have seen those pictures, <laughs> you, know, you probably would have thought it was George Harrison himself walking onto this. <laughs> I, I've put on a little bit of weight since then, actually, I hasten to add, because George Harrison was actually quite a thin person. And Guru, this is the one thing I realized from my experience, everyone's got their own experience of Abai Tran on and off the set. My personal experience was that maybe because it happened relatively recent in time and that there were God brothers and God sisters that, that were physically there during you know, the time when George Harrison, you know, in the late 60s, early 70s, when George Harrison was most engaged with his kind of devotees, um, that Guru Maharaj, I felt, was going out of his way to do as much research as possible to make it as accurate as possible, even to the point of asking Sham Sundar Babu what did George Harrison say when you said this? And, and scripting it on, 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 you know, word for word. I mean, obviously, there had to be some artistic license, a bit of editing, but to make it as genuine as possible. And in that, I think it was Naveen Krishna Prabhu or some other devotee who, at Guru Maharaj's request, he actually wanted to see some film footage of the Beatles and listen to how they speak. Because it, I, I, I myself have said, actually, Guru Maharaj, um, I can't just do this with a, a normal, it's got to be done with what I call a Scouser accent. And Guru Maharaj didn't actually know what I meant by a Scouser accent, you know, coming from India and, and things like that. You can't expect him to know about a Scouser accent. Of course, you know, it means talking a little bit like that, you know, I'm going to be one of the Beatles. So this is how the Beatles would speak for a Liverpool accent. And, and I said, you cannot do the Beatles without asking the actors to do a Scouser accent. Even to the point where he, those devotees who were, I think, I think in Mumbai there were devotees who were, or professional actors that were translating into Hindi, 
speaking Hindi in a Scouser accent. Now, that's something which I don't even want to imagine what that was like, uh, because I, I have heard the Hindi version of, of our of Aitran, as in where you hear it in Hindi. And it, it's kind of, I don't know if anyone can do that for me, speak Hindi with a Liverpool accent, but he did it. Guru Maharaj <laughs> trained these actors doing the dubbing to actually make it that authentic. And yet it was in Hindi. But of course, I was doing it in English. And even to the point where Guru Maharaj was looking at photographs of John Lennon, George Harrison and the others, uh, Ringo Starr and Paul McCartney, looking at pictures of them and asking um, the what we call the runners, which means um, members of the film crew that have to go and get bits and pieces together, going out to Jumble Sales, Oxfam, or, or even to whatever was around at the time, get me a scarf like this, get me a wig like that, to try and make the Beatles as accurate as possible because they were well-known people and you can't get away with anything less, especially to those who knew the Beatles. And, and you know, you've got to have the right kind of hair, the right moustache for the period. And, and, and what I would say, the personal direction I had from Grimage for the George Harrison um, was his will, I think he, he was working through Shamsunda. So he would speak, to, he would find out from Shamsunda Baru about George Harrison, what it was like to meet him, what his demeanor was. And then Shamsunda and Grimage together would direct me, as well as, of course, as, as others involved that were in the makeup and so forth. And I'll tell you one thing. Guru Maharaj actually did notice, even then, even 20 years ago, I was slightly bigger than George Harrison was in terms of my, my build. My face, I, could, I, I got away with with me. My overall build and my weight was still, even in those days, as a slim brahmachari, bigger than George Harrison. And Guru Maharaj actually asked me to fast for oh. the part. <laughs> and, and believe it or not, for the first and probably only time in my life, I fasted. I had salads for a couple of weeks and, and uh, <laughs> no maha, no nine o'clock maha prashad and ghee with puris and, and um, fried food. So I actually did a, 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 a fast just to lose weight for the part. So that was, I felt, that, but because he was dealing with well-known personalities, the Beatles, he really wanted to get it right. And yeah, so you can imagine that was quite ecstatic actually. <laughs> Yeah. Well, <laughs> probably well, you're saved from growing your hair, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, 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 the character I played in South Africa was basically a bit different because it was, wasn't a well-known person that I was playing. And for that one, I was given, he wanted me to have my own angle on it. Sometimes actors are allowed to have their own interpretation of something. And with that one, it was more based on artistic license. That wasn't strictly part of the Abarai Charan series because Prabhupada was not in it. I think that the actor playing Prabhupada, was it Mr. Swayam Jello, who's now the late Mr. Swayam? Yeah. So he couldn't make it to South Africa, if memory serves me correctly. Although, again, forgive me if I got that wrong, but I don't remember him being there. So this was set apart from the rest of Abai Um, But nevertheless, the, the, from my point of view, it gave me a lot of us, a lot more association than ever of Guru Maharaj because we were staying in the same house for about two months. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so okay. thank you. Uh, I just want to open up if there's any other questions that devotees have. Ah. Please don't feel shy amongst friends. Got family. Uh, well, um, okay. There's something in the chat. Is there something there? I don't know. Oh. That was the question from Vinod Mandri about oh, George Harrison. Um, we might be letting him off easy. So uh, Good. <laughs> I, it, it, it's, it's wonderful, you know, having your association. Um, and just some pointers that came out to me for me. Yeah, you, you mentioned that Guru Maharaj links, you know, disciples to Iskar and Shri Prabhupada. And that was very much, you know, uh, so you mentioned that, and that was very much Guru Maharaj's mood. So thank you for, you know, reminding us of that. And um, and, and, and you say, as you said, you know, it's very much about, about reinforcing every, any opportunity you've got, having this united Iskar, right? 
and, in, and, and actually he would himself uh, attend um, Bhagatam classes of his god brothers and god sisters. Right? Mm. And so that was, you know, very much setting an example of it, you know, himself. Um, and, and I think one other thing that I had, yeah, and you mentioned also the opening of the Jain temple, right? In that opening, you, what you saw was Guru Maharaj actually took very much a backseat, although, you know, arguably you could say, you know, he built the temple, et cetera, as his temple, so to speak. But, you know, he, he very much took sort of backseat in everything, in, in the sort of installation of the deities, right? And, and he encouraged, you know, he wanted his uh, god brothers and god sisters to get more involved. And he also very you know, eloquently described that as well. So uh, thank you. Thank you for that. And, Hi, Krishna. Uh, yeah. uh, okay, so I think we'll leave it there then. And um, thank you once again, right, uh, Radhaman Prabhu. And thank you for all our listeners for you know, attending this week. And we hope to have your association again next week. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you for listening. And of course, thank you for giving me the opportunity to share. And if I've made any offences or I've, I've got anything that wasn't, was, wasn't quite accurate or I may have remembered it wrong or in the wrong sequence, then do forgive me for that. But the main thing is, is we just have to um, keep our memories with us and, and cherish them and to help us in our spiritual journey. Yes. Thank you. On that note. Thank you very much, Radhaman Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.